sorry, we'll take a minute to get Paul rearranged and then we'll proceed. Okay, my name is Paddy Sleeman. It gives me great pleasure to be here today, especially because I'm presenting with somebody from Northern Ireland. It would have been unheard of in the recent past for people from the two parts of Ireland to present together. So I'm very glad to be presenting with Declan Nomani, who's from the Agri-Food and Biosciences Institute in New Forge Lane in Belfast, and who did the bulk of the work, the bulk of the more, more sophisticated work that I'm going to uh, tell you about. And I'm from the School of uh, Bees, Biology, Earth Science, and Environmental Sciences at University College Cork. What I'm going to describe is two research projects that we did, one in the south, where we looked at 200 farmyards in winters early this century, and then I'm going to describe Decton's project, which was looking at the proximity of badgers and cattle in South County Down, which was prompted by a review of the transmission from badgers to cattle by Alan et al., and I've underlined the peer-reviewed references that I'd be using, and I've printed off a copy of the peer-reviewed reference list here for those of you who are as old-fashioned as me and don't look up the internet when you want a reference. Okay. So we're going to review the Irish research to begin with and review similar research efforts in England, and now that they have bovine tuberculosis in, in badgers in France, also France. So it'll be a limited review of the literature in England and France. Transmission of diseases is extremely important to their understanding. It's extremely variable, and it's often how we get to manage and control a disease. And we have fantastic tools these days to work out how diseases are uh, transmitted or how they were transmitted in the distant past. And Margaret already mentioned the Peruvian mummy in, uh, that was discovered to have sea mammal tuberculosis transmitted before Columbus discovered America. So that was an extraordinary discovery. Uh, we also now know that Lyme disease, which is a tick-borne illness that occurs in woodland, is now sexually transmitted. So you don't have to be careful in woodlands so much anymore. You have to be careful in the bedroom. Plus, we also now know that the Black Death, bubonic plague, came in in a series of reintroductions from Asia to Europe uh, during the Middle Ages. So these things have been worked out in the dim and distant past. So if we have the same tools, the same molecular uh, modeling tools and the same molecular bi biological tools, we should be able to, with proximity tags and whole genomic TB uh, reference tools, to solve the problem about how bovine tuberculosis spills over from badgers to cattle. So the problem, despite our knowledge, and Margaret's done a very good expedition of this, of both bovine tuberculosis itself, the ecology of both badgers and cattle, that Theresa was talking about, we don't know where it occurs and we don't know how it occurs. Does it occur directly from badgers to cattle or does it occur indirectly from badger products such as urine or feces to cattle? There's a great deal of confusion in the literature as I'll show you later on. And we still don't know which habitat it occurs in. Does it occur in pasture? Does it occur in buildings? Or does it occur at cattle troughs? Or perhaps a mixture of all these. For example, you get troughs indoors in, in buildings. So the research work in Ireland, this would have been done by me a long, long time ago in the 1990s. I discovered in three nights in November 1990, using an old-fashioned radio tag, that there was a female badger from an infected set used a milking powder continuously over three nights in 1990. She was from an infected set. We don't know if she had tuberculosis, but the set was infected. That farm still has never gone positive for bovine tuberculosis. So you get incidents where this TB infection in the badgers that does, don't spill over to cattle, despite the fact that badgers are going to buildings. Later that, uh, in that same study, we had a female who was killed by a toxin in what Theresa would call an excursion uh, 10 kilometers from her set. She was a lactating female, she was positive for TB, she was licked by cattle, those cattle went positive. That's what we call a direct connection. But these seem to be very rare in the literature. Then we did the, the winter yard survey from 2006 to 2007, and then the subsequent winter, we looked at 200 randomly selected farmyards. 
trying to see if the story we get from the UK about badgers visiting yards and spilling over to cattle was also true here. We also have the 11, 11 project that you've heard from Teresa and you'll hear again before lunchtime. And we also have the reviews of Corner et al. 2011 and Nibukli et al. 2015. Both come to the conclusion that it's a respiratory transmission route between badgers and cattle. In Northern Ireland, we have the Department of Agriculture and Rural Affairs. They had this very intensive review by Alastair Allen, Robin Skews, and Stanley MacDonald in 2011, which stated that there should be several studies across the province looking at transmission. As is usual in research projects, they didn't get several studies. They got one for a year, a very good study, Declan's study done in South Down, where he used proximity collars to see if there was any direct contact between badgers and cattle. He also looked at troughs, he also looked at buildings, and he, he had several cameras in, in many different buildings. And we also have the whole genome work on bovine tuberculosis done by DARD as well in Northern Ireland, and that's a very significant tool that should be employed in the future to solve this problem. So in England, to begin with, they thought badgers with TB behaved abnormally. They went into cow houses, they were pushed out of their sets. That was the view in the 1980s and 1990s. There were several uh, PhDs, three in Bristol, and there are several peer-reviewed peer papers from that work. Then in the middle period, they decided a different emphasis that they went for badgers using cattle facilities. There was the papers by Ben Garnett, Judge, Tolhurst, and Ward, and they came up with a very significant suggestion, which was that we could prevent this problem by identifying the transmission route and then interfering with biosecurity. So we didn't need culling, we didn't need um, vaccination, we just needed to improve biosecurity. And this idea is still prevalent in UK. It may, be, may not be as prevalent here. And later on, we have the study by Braum with an umlaut and Drew, both who looked at, with proximity cars, looked at badger's cattle transmission. Brom found several direct contacts between badgers and cattle. Drew found very, very few. Four out of 500,000 contacts between badgers and cattle were direct transmission routes. Then in France, we've got a similar study by Payne et al. They found no direct transmission and less frequent uh, visits to badgers, but to, by badgers to buildings. So I did this yard survey 2006, 2007, 2007, 2008. We selected 102 dairy farms and 98 beef farms. We visited them twice in two winters. We asked them what wildlife had, had occurred in the yards from 2000. We searched the yards diligently for, cattle, for badger tracks. We reminded them what a badger track looked like. We gave them a picture of it. We showed them that it was five toes, just like themselves, they have five fingers. And we reported this, that we could find very little evidence of badgers in Irish farmyards in winter, which, which is when the, the, cattle, when the time of year when the cattle are in. We published this. In Northern Ireland, they, they, the, the results of the review by uh, Robin, uh, by Alastair Allen, stressed that the route was transmission. So they chose uh, South Down for a study area, 130, 1,350 1, hectares, mostly grassland. They used GPS. Just proximity colors and motion activated infrared cameras. They wanted to quantify the direct transmission between cattle and badgers and see about the rate at which badgers visited cattle facilities. Here it is, that's the area of South Down, very beautiful area, very, very little woodland, mostly pasture, as Margaret was saying about the whole of Ireland. They found 4,000, 39,000 interreactions, no evidence whatsoever of direct transmission. Um, but there were uh, intense interactions within species. The badgers interacted a lot in a very unpredictable individualistic way, as did the cattle. The badgers did visit farmyards, but very rarely, and they generally avoided areas with cattle, but they existed and visited areas with cattle food. So that's a subtle difference between the, the, what they find in the UK. And they concluded that direct contact was not a significant route, and they call for a concentration of research on sets, on troughs, and in buildings. So, the comparison, the issues. I hate to finish this talk, but the usual scientific stuff is saying, we have to do more research. But that's the conclusion, is we have to do more research. If we do find the major route of transmission, be it direct or indirect transmission, there's, there is a possibility that we could do with less culling or less, less vaccination. So that, that's an exciting uh, offer. 
We know that Irish badges differ significantly from those in the UK. If I can use the three Ds, their DNA is different, their density is different, and their diet is different. So they're very, very diff different ecologically from badges in the UK. For example, the densities in coal areas in, in the Republic of Ireland are 0.9 to 0.48 per kilometre squared, whereas the, uh, the densities they found during similar coals in the UK were 0.76 to 2.77. So that's an extremely significant difference in density. Water troughs are definitely a problem. It's been discovered several times, both here and in UK, that badgers visit water troughs in ones and twos fairly frequently, and this is a possible transmission route that should be investigated. It would be very simple to fix that. But we also need a new study area outside the vaccine and treatment areas where there's limited culling, ordinary culling, perhaps 200, 300 square kilometers, because we know the scale of these studies must be very high. You heard Theresa go on about those excursions. We've had similar, even more uh, wide-ranging badgers in, in various study areas. And we need to get the statisticians to tell us how long and what a, a big area we should study, preferably near the border, preferably one study area in Northern Ireland and the other study area in the Republic. A cross-border cooperative study, I think, would be the ideal thing. Okay, these are the references which I printed out here. I'd very much like to thank the people who I mentioned here, plus the many farmers who helped us during this study. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paddy, for a very interesting talk. Are there any questions from the, um, from the audience? Very quiet today. Yeah, but I suppose the obvious question is, you know, if, if these interactions are as rare as as you're suggesting in the farms, then is it just is, is time the the biggest risk factor, or are we missing something on the um, spatial dimension? I think you've got to understand those data are from badgers and cattle that they got the tags on. That might not be all the badgers in in the in the circumstances, they could have not coloured the badgers that had direct interactions. One of the things I like to say about in meetings like this is that dead badgers don't behave. So if a badger dies in a pasture and it's licked by cattle, which is what happened in that incident in 1990, whatever it was, in Cork, the badger was, was killed by a toxin on a pasture and the cattle came and licked her, and specifically came and licked areas of her body that, that would, would have TB being transmitted from them. And that may occur commonly, we just miss it. Certainly, it's anecdotal from rural Ireland that this occurs fairly frequently. Perhaps both methods of transmission occur, but what we, I'd like to discover is what the main method of transmission is between badgers and cattle. That would be very helpful. Quantify it. Thank yes? Speaker, a question over here. Ro uh, Roger Blowy, Gloucester. So would your data, uh, I might have missed the point, but would your data identify whether or not latrine areas, for example, um, were possible sources of infection? Because simply because the badger itself does not have contact surely does not rule out the possibility that the contact is through latrine areas, urine and so on. Yes, I couldn't agree more, uh, and Ward et al. in UK have put down a series of recommendations to break that link from latrines to cattle. And one of the things that we note in Ireland, and this is in a, we, there's a paper called The Breakdown of Territoriality in Badgers in County Cork, that when territoriality breaks down, it's usually less than one badger per kilometre square, and tr transmission seems to cease. And with the breakdown of territoriality, you no longer get this intense use of latrine areas. So latrine areas could well be where it's at. But you've got to understand, in the UK, 70-80% of your badger sets occur in woodland. Here, 90% of our badger sets occur in hedgerows. So they're much more exposed to cattle than yours in the UK. Plus, the badgers are different in their DNA, they're different in their diet, they're different in their density. So comparisons between South Southwest England and Ireland lead to a lot of errors and a lot of uh, bickering in the veterinary record, which we could do without. 